Welcome to VidZet. I'm Dr. Ted Noel. The left wants us to believe that even if Hillary Clinton has Parkinson's disease, it's no big deal. After all, JFK and FDR had major diseases and they did fine in the Oval Office. But there's one big problem here. JFK and FDR had diseases that didn't affect their ability to think. Hillary's Parkinson's disease has a lot of repeating physical signs. Crossed eyes are a daily occurrence. Pill rolling tremors are becoming common. The question now is, what does all of this mean? Is there a bigger problem in front of us? Parkinson's disease is classified as a neuropsychiatric disorder, not just a neurological disorder. That means that while it has a lot of movement problems, it also has a lot of mental problems. It's time for us to look at what's probably happening with Hillary's mind. I'll only be covering the big stuff. Our first stop is the 9-11 Memorial. Hillary froze while waiting for the Scooby van. As Joe, a real Parkinson's fa disease family member puts it, when Aunt B freezes, her body is like a wooden board. Every part of her is stiff. You'd have to break her leg to bend it. One time he was a step ahead of her and turned as she toppled into him, totally rigid. At the 9-11 memorial, Hillary looked just like Aunt B. Now Parkinson's sufferers have a difficult life. They live in a body that's not listening to them and with a mind they can't control. Let me repeat this. They cannot control their mind. At any moment, they may look totally normal. And then suddenly the brain decides that it can't handle whatever is coming in. It completely locks up and locks the body with it. Everything stops until their brain reboots. This brings us to the second nearly universal feature of Parkinson's disease. It has an on-off cycle. During the on time, Aunt B, who has a master's degree in education, looks, acts, and thinks normally. But when her levodopa levels fall, she hits an off time. It's almost as if your brain is a car in Alabama mud without positraction. What is positraction? It's a limited slip differential which distributes power equally to both the right and left tires. The 64 Skylark had a regular differential, which anyone who's been stuck in the mud in Alabama knows you step on the gas, one tire spins, the other tire does nothing. That's right. Your wheels spin, but you don't go anywhere. Aunt B doesn't even live in that body during the off time. She can't meaningfully interact with the world. And that brings us to WikiLeaks. On Friday, August 8, 2015, Jennifer Palmieri emailed Ron Klain about scheduling a Clinton interview. Hillary was at a rally on Sunday Jennifer suggested the interview should be delayed until Tuesday so that Hillary would be, quote, in her right head space, close quote. This is a clear reference to being able to perform well in the interview. But it also implies that she would not be able to perform well on the Monday after her other event. In other words, she'd be tired or otherwise impaired. Because of the wording of the email, we are led to believe that she would not be thinking well. This is a pale description of the off state. 
On September 15, Nira Tandon emailed John Podesta, quote, I mean it makes my life more difficult after telling every reporter I know she's actually progressive, but that is really the smallest of issues. It worries me more that she doesn't seem to know what planet we were all living in at the moment. Close quote. It's pretty obvious that her mental faculties are considerably impaired. On Sunday, October 11, 2015, Huma Abedin emailed staff about what time to schedule debate prep, since there was a primary debate the following day. She pointed out that evening is probably better on the body clock. This again suggests that they were timing events and medications to allow Hillary to have her on time during the debate. On and off states happen on a daily basis as drug levels go up and down. And because a host of other factors affect how long levodopa lasts, a sufferer may have two hours of good time or a whole day. There's no good way to predict. But when the levels go down, the sufferer's mind works about as well as driving out of Alabama mud without pause attraction. And this is the good news! 95% of Parkinson's disease patients develop personality changes. Let me repeat this. 95% of Parkinson's disease patients develop personality changes. It's a private hell for its victims and their families. The reasons for this aren't entirely clear but Parkinson's leads commonly to anxiety, depression, and anger. While Hillary's anger is legendary, she's generally been able to keep it behind closed doors. Her public face is all sweetness and light. But in front of the Benghazi committee in 2013, she came unglued when answering questions from Senator Ron Johnson. Pardon. We no. were misled that there was supposedly protests and then something sprang out of that, an assault sprang out of that. And that was easily but ascertained I, that that was not the fact. But, but, and the American know, people could have known that within days, and, and they, they didn't know that. With all due respect, the fact is we had four dead Americans. Was it I because understand. of a protest or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? Parkinson's disease families and caregivers instantly recognized this as a Parkinson's disease rage. Now most of us, when faced with an unpleasant situation, have the ability to control our expressions of anger. But in Parkinson's disease, this control can be very difficult. Emotions build and build and ultimately they explode at whoever's in front of them. It's not that Hillary hated Senator Johnson. She just couldn't help herself. We also know that she blasted the NBC News crew after the Commander-in-Chief Forum because they didn't give her all of the questions in advance. Now suppose Hillary travels to Tokyo and someone irritates her. Will we find ourselves at war with Japan? Unfortunately, we are just getting started. In the early stages of Parkinson's disease, Aunt B can look normal when her levodopa is working. She thinks, speaks, and interacts normally. Her master's degree is fully functional. Then dementia commonly happens. Now, Parkinson's disease dementia is not like Alzheimer's dementia. In Alzheimer's disease, patients become unable to make memories and lose many of their more recent ones. The demented Parkinson's sufferer can usually remember, but has trouble using those memories. They may know that a stove is hot and that touching a hot stove will hurt, but can't put two and two together to avoid touching the stove. They often need help with simple things, like personal hygiene. This sort of cognitive, that is, brain deficit, affects up to 80% of patients with Parkinson's disease. Executive functions, such as task switching, are also impaired. 
Suppose President Parkinson is at a cabinet meeting and word comes in that Russia has shot down a U.S. airplane. Will it be possible for her to shift from a discussion about farm subsidies over to the defense concern on the fly? And can a President Parkinson make a good decision about the new problem? The difficulty here is called misperception. President Parkinson can have big problems processing information presented to her. So even if her briefing is right on target, how can we know that what she heard is what she was told? Next, studies show that reasoning toward expected outcomes are impaired in Parkinson's patients. If reasoning is impaired, then choices will be too. But even if she's able to reason properly, her reasoning will be slow. And that's another problem for President Parkinson. Some answers need to come right now. And even if the answer is right, finding the right words to express it can be difficult. Then, if President Parkinson schedules more than two or three appointments during the day, this will create an overload but the president has to be able to handle long, full days every day. President Parkinson cannot do that. What happens if President Parkinson is medicated in the best possible way, taking advantage of what we know about how blood levels go up and down? It turns out that there's no way to be sure that the meds are good at the right moment. Because there are so many factors that affect blood levels, a dose that reached its peak at the right time may work all the way through a cabinet meeting, or it may wear off early. So if President Parkinson takes an overdose to make sure of enough good time for the cabinet meeting, a new problem comes up. Treating tremors makes the dementia worse. But if you leave the tremors less well treated so that you don't worsen the dementia, you have a president who have, may have great difficulty with physical tasks like speaking and walking. There's no good answer. But it gets even worse. Parkinson's disease is treated with levodopa. The brain converts it to dopamine to get its effect in the coordination centers. And if we give enough levodopa to get a longer effect, brain dopamine is going to get high. And that's exactly what happens when a person gets a high from a hit of cocaine. The reward center in the brain gets stimulated. Oops. A properly treated President Parkinson may look like she's high on cocaine. She may be energetic and sociable, but she may also get angry or even paranoid. Hallucinations are possible. Impulsive behavior is common. Imagine an impulsive, angry President Parkinson. Will we have any friends left in the world? A President Parkinson is America's worst nightmare. And it has absolutely nothing to do with politics. Such a mentally disabled president has the ability to do unimaginable harm. And there's no medical way to treat or prevent the derangement. We aren't electing a man or a woman. We're electing a brain that's in the body of a man or a woman. And if the inhabitant of that body can't control essential parts of that brain, we're placing America, all of it, in grave danger. America must have a president who is fully able to think. Our president must be able to take the 3 a.m. phone call and respond with a clear head. President Parkinson can't do that job. I'm Dr. Ted Noel. Thanks for watching.